At that time, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became radiant, intensely white, as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. And Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, and one for Moses, and one for Elijah. For he did not know what to say, for they were terrified. And a cloud overshadowed them, and a voice came out of the cloud. This is my beloved son, listen to him. And suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone with them but Jesus only. And as they were coming down the mountain, he charged them to tell no one what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what this rising from the dead might mean. And they asked him, Why did, do the scribes say that first Elijah must come? And he said to them, Elijah does come first to restore all things. And how is it written of the Son of Man that he should suffer many things and be treated with contempt? But I tell you that Elijah has come, and they did to him whatever they pleased, as it is written of him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, is there any connection between a miracle, faith, and sacrifice. There was a time ago when I met with a parent, a father of a young man who was considering joining the seminary, and he was quite anxious about the prospect. And he was complaining to me, actually, that uh, what does not edify him or his son is when um, some priests complain I've made these sacrifices uh, to become a priest. I've given up marriage. I've given up so many worldly pleasures, perhaps. Okay, so he was complaining to me that he has heard some priests complaining like that. And uh, he said, then I could also equally say that I have given up all the other women in the world in order to marry my wife. Well, the point being that we choose a spouse or we choose a particular vocation, not because of what we are giving up, but because we are choosing something good, something beautiful, something precious. And because of that, we are, by our saying yes to this, we are saying no to many other things. Faith involves sacrifice. And miracles strengthen our faith in order to bear the consequences of sacrifice. We often get stuck with the miracle, just like the disciples who feel so good at the Mount Tabor as Jesus produces this wonderful vision of himself with Moses and Elijah standing side by side, expressing his divinity as the fulfillment of the law and the prophets of the Old Testament. And it is so tempting for us to make our spirituality based on the miracles that we have experienced in our life. But when Jesus gives us miracles, it is to strengthen our faith. It is so that our faith may carry us through the difficult moments of our chosen path. Yes, it was faith that led the disciples to leave everything, their family, their livelihood, in order to follow Jesus. It was faith that led Abraham even to consider sacrifice his only son to God when he felt that God was calling him to do so. It was faith that led Abel to make sacrifices of his first fruits of his labor in the fields. 
It was faith that protected Enoch, whom we hear about in the first reading, to preserve himself from the wicked generation that lived in his times prior to the time of Noah, because Enoch was the great-grandfather of Noah, according to the Old Testament. And so the sacrifices that we bear in order to, uh, to follow God, to, to, to follow Jesus, may not be excl explicable to people around us. Why would you stay faithful to your husband, to your wife, through thick and thin, in, in difficult times, in good times? Why would you stick to your vocation when there are so many temptations to be unfaithful? Why would we take up the particular sacrifices that are required of us in the season of Lent, if not for faith? And so if we have experienced the Lord in a powerful way in the past, thanks be to God. But let our spirituality not be based on these exhilarating experiences. Our faith must be based on a deeper trust in the person of Jesus, in the faithfulness of God and His presence with us even when we do not feel it. In fact, in every Eucharist, we may not feel anything exhilarating. Jesus comes to us in the ordinary appearances of bread and wine. And yet faith tells us that he is truly present in those species, in his body, blood, soul and divinity, his real presence. And that is how we receive him, so that we may strengthen ourselves in the difficult moments of being faithful to our vocation. Let us pray for these graces in this Eucharist.